In this tutorial, we'll discuss with you guys about the thin layer chromatography, which is shortly known as TLC. We'll discuss uh, with you guys the introduction of this TLC, the chromatography, the main components of the chromatography, and uh, we will answer a question that why TLC is called TLC, and uh, we will also know the components of this TLC, the instrumentation or the material required for the TLC, the working of this TLC, the principle through which our this working uh, is actually functional, and uh, the analysis, we will know about that what types of the compounds can be analyzed through this TLC, thin layer chromatography. So let's start from the very first point, that is the introduction. In the introduction, we will know that from where the TLC is, in short, we will know the background of the TLC. So here comes the starting of the background that uh, according to the classification of chromatography, according to the classification of chromatography, the chromatography is classified into different classes. Okay, into different classes. Here, regarding TLC point of view, I will mention just one class. Now, this is actually a single class, known by different names. This is a noun by the geometry. This classification is actually named by geometry. In some books, it is named by supporting medium, and in some other textbooks, it is named by the chromatographic pad. So consider that this is actually a single class. According to this class of the chromatography, we have two types of the chromatography. We have classes, and in the classes we have types. So this is one class, okay? We do have some other class, and uh, which I'm not going to mention here in this video, okay? So, according to this class, we have two types. One is planar, another one is column. So, according to the planar, we do have some other types, subtypes, that is TLC and the paper chromatography. So, the TLC is actually a planar chromatography, and this actually lies in this particular class of the chromatography. It was a little bit about the background of the TLC. Now, let's come towards the chromatography. I will just introduce to you guys the chromatography in a single line that it is actually a technique through which we do the separation of the mixture if we have any kind of mixture if you want to separate this mixture and if you want to know the components through which this mixture is formed so this separation technique by which we are separating the components of the mixture that technique is known as chromatography okay now let's come towards the next point that is the main components of any type of the chromatography. Whenever we are doing the study of chromatography, we see two main components. Component number one, the stationary phase. Number two, the mobile phase. These two are the very prominent and responsible component to do the separation of our mixture. Now what is the stationary phase and mobile phase? Stationary stands for standing or stagnant, you can say fixed phase. We have one phase which is fixed, another one is mobile. The name indicates which is moving okay mobile phase so the same two phases are actually the main components of our this tlc and uh, we do have different types of uh, phases in different chromatographies okay in this chromatography our stationary phase will be silica or alumina you can use any of them and the more often used is actually the silica which is a polar stationary phase and we have mobile phase which is a solvent or which may be the mixture of solvent and this is actually the non-polar now remember one very important point regarding the stationary phase and mobile phase one must be polar another one must be non-polar now what is the logic behind why why one must be polar and another one must be non-polar very simple logic you know the like dissolves the like when you have polar it will dissolve polar things suppose uh, if you take water and you add are you pour the water from one pot in another pot so then those just uh, water molecules just combine together and when you talk about the uh, ghee or water means if you are taking the ghee or oil and adding that in the water this is non-polar and this is polar you are mixing two things so it is not possible for them to mix up and you will see different layers of both the same is the case here we must use the polar stationary phase and the non-polar mobile phase we can interchange them we do have different types of chromatographies than normal phase and reverse phase which we have discussed in our other videos so if you want to know about those just go there well come to the point here so we must have different okay our phases one must be polar another one must be non-polar 
so here we have polar stationary phase and non-polar mobile phase now if we take this two difference this will help us to do the separation of our sample in a very easy way now why these two will help in separating in an easy way very simple you know our sample our mixture that will be having components which will be having interaction with our mobile phase and with our stationary phase so those which will be having interaction those components which will be showing interaction with the stationary phase they will just move a little bit slow they will be uh, just acting like they are sticking to the stationary phase and those components that are uh, having a little bit less interaction with our stationary phase they will uh, start moving with the mobile phase so this is how our stationary phase and mobile phase are actually helping in separation of the components of the mixture now let's come towards the next point is instrumentation or the material required to perform TLC. We need a glass slide, we need silica, our stationary phase, we need our mobile phase, the solvent, we need the pencil and uh, what we need else is we need the sample. So these are actually the very basics that we need and we also need a scale when we are going to uh, know about the RF, retardation factor or retention factor. Retardation or retention factor so this was about the instrumentation or the material required to perform TLC now let's come towards the working how this entire instrument works very simple we need a glass slide and we need our stationary phase then we will take this stationary phase and we will paste this stationary phase on our this glass slide a very thin layer will be pasted on this glass slide now our glass slide is prepared with the stationary phase you can say our stationary phase is now ready and uh, now one can take this stationary phase already in prepare form also so we have both the options and both the choices whether we want to prepare it or we want to buy it in prepared form that's up to us whatever is easy for us well now our stationary phase is prepared after that we need a pencil we will take the pencil we will consider any one of the side as a base side and we will draw a base line on that side we will sketch a baseline and this baseline is needed to be sketched by the pencil why pencil because pencil is then not going to disturb our chromatography if we use pen then you know pen is also a colored mixture and you might have performed a paper type chromatography in which you are separating the ink so we don't use ink we use the pencil that our chromatography technique must not be disturbed okay that we must uh, get a perfect and uh, very accurate type of result for this chromatography so we got one side as a base side and we sketched the baseline and after that we are supposed to spot our sample what will we do we will spot our sample means we will take capillary tube in that we will just take our sample and then we will spot our sample on this baseline after spotting we will leave our this stationary phase for a while that the spot might become dry and in the meanwhile we will be having a chamber and this chamber must be covered uh, for the reason that the solvent present inside must saturate the entire chamber so when the entire chamber is saturated then it is very really easy for us to perform our this type of chromatography so what we did now we got our uh, stationary phase and we spotted that with the sample and we have a saturated chamber now what will we do is that we will just take our this spotted stationary phase and we will hang this stationary phase by mean of a clip inside this chamber in which our mobile phase or solvent is available so now here we got our mobile phase and our stationary phase now both the phases are available and one very important point regarding this uh, stage you must remember is that you must not dip the spotted line if you dip the spotted line then what will happen then this spotted sample will dissolve in our a solvent and then will diffuse inside the solvent then our sample will not move upward by means of capillary action because you have already dipped in the solvent and this will actually dissolve inside and then the entire solvent will become disturbed and our practical performance will become somehow exhausted means not of any work so what we are supposed to do is that we must hang our stationary phase a little bit higher that our spotted line must not dip in the solvent or you can say in the mobile phase what happens next is that leave this apparatus like this and wait for a while you will see our solvent mobile phase moving upward and separating the components on the stationary phase what will happen next our component the spotted sample 
will start separating into components suppose we have star we have one we have two now these three components are present in our this spotted sample so now our sample is actually separated into components by means of this mobile and stationary phases now what next you are supposed to do is that you will just take out your this stationary phase uh, which has now our sample on it being separated okay so here we have star and we have one and two now this is our uh, stationary phase available here now the next step is that we are supposed to know about the rf the retention factor or retardation you can use any retention or retardation factor now what is this factor talking about this is actually telling us the distance moved by the solute and the distance moved by the solvent so you will take the division of these two now how this rf is actually uh, measured very simple right rf here is equal to now just uh, measure the distance moved by the components and the distance moved by the solvent you can use another term for solvent is solvent front so consider that our solvent was here okay in blue this solvent has covered the entire path from the base the baseline and up to this particular region our uh, this is actually covered by the or you can say moved by the solvent or the solvent front so what will you do first of all from the baseline from the baseline till this particular point till which our solvent has moved you will measure this region and after that you will put the value here uh, suppose we will write here the distance traveled by our solvent you write it here at the top uh, you can say at the nominator you will write the distance traveled by the solute or you can say the component i will hit by c so rf is actually the distance traveled by the c divided by distance traveled by the solvent front or you can say the solvent so now we have three components which these are actually separated from our sample so you will do this uh, rf three times or you can calculate it in one step also but i'm telling you people in three steps do it for one type then do the same procedure rf is equal to uh, component here was our star now here is our uh, component number one divided by uh, the solvent front d distance moved by the solvent front this is for the second one and do the same procedure for the third one now we have component number third named two distance moved by the two now both the distance must be measured from the baseline okay from the baseline to the specific point uh, which you are interested in if you are interested in measuring the distance moved by the star so you will calculate it from the baseline and again if you are interested in uh, measuring the distance moved by the one so from the baseline till the one from the baseline till the two you will measure and from the baseline till the top of this portion which is actually the distance moved by the solvent front you will calculate these after that you just put in this formula rf is equal to distance moved by one component divided by distance moved by the solvent front and you will just place the values here whatever the values you get from this uh, measurement after that we get the value you will compare your this value with your standard reading you know whenever we are performing any type of experiment we do have two types of result one result already noun result that is called as the standard result and the second one is that which we performed or the result that we got from our practical performance we will just compare our this performance result with this already noun result when we compare then we will easily identify that what type of mixture was with us what type of sample was with us and what types of components were present in the particular sample so this is how we identify the rf and the next point is analysis so we do different types of analysis through this tlc it is more specific for the colored substances and we do use sometimes the non colored substances you might have heard about that sometimes when we perform the practical performance we don't see any type of color separation in our this stationary phase actually we wait also for a longer period of time but still we don't see the reason behind is that our sample is actually containing some non-colored components that mixture is actually composed of some non-colored then what we are going to do about that uh, case we will just wait for our performance for a specific time which is already mentioned in the standard time so we will wait for that after waiting we will just take our this uh, particular uh, stationary phase out and then we will just check that stationary phase under the uv light or some other uh, source so then it will be very easy for us to identify or to spot the separated components so that is for non-colored one and this is for the colored one i hope you got and if still you have any kind of confusion please 
feel free to ask us in the comment box we're here to help you guys thank you for watching